on this with my co-host from Below the Belt Show, Flex. That's right, Flex is here in the house. That's right, we're here for a special episode of Click to interview one of the iconic names in alternative rock, one of Flex's favorite artists. That's right, he is one of my favorites. I cannot believe we're going to be interviewing Peter Murphy and checking out a show right here at the State Theater in Falls Church, Virginia tonight. So stay tuned for an exclusive interview with the godfather of goth himself, and we're going to check out his amazing show tonight. Stay tuned. Flex here, guest co-hosting for Click On This with my regular cohort off camera right now, Al Soto, spending some time with an iconic frontman of Bauhaus, hugely successful solo artist and godfather of goth, Peter Murphy. And uh, we are here in Falls Church, Virginia, D.C. area, for your show tonight at the State Theater. How is that going to happen? It's going well. We're, we're in the last third of a tour of the States and this is like a pre-album release warm-up. The album ninth is coming out on June the 7th and it is my ninth. And now, I don't know if you can hear, hear me in the camera, but which, uh, which label are you on these days? Network Music. Okay. And they're based in Toronto, but they, they have uh, mainly like an American base and it has great worldwide distribution. Mm -hmm. And uh, as for the tour, it's going, I mean, it really is amazing. Uh, like, as you probably know, I count my live performances just as important as making music, actually. It isn't just a, just a cursory sort of a, your task that I have to do to promote an album, you know. Right. So, uh, you know, I pride myself on um, it, my live about. reputation, yeah. Right. Now, if you don't, don't mind my asking. I, I know that, and I'm not sure how touchy this is for you, but I know that you finally were working on some new material for Dolly's Car. All right, so, and it's recent. It's very recent. This is, this is very, very fresh. And I was excited to hear about this. And the fact that you really had not communicated with Mick in years, decades. And all of a sudden, you're working on some new material. And go ahead, go ahead and tell the audience what happened. What Mick kind of is, is, is a well-loved, was a well-loved, well-respected bass player of the band Japan in England in the early 80s and then he went on to become a solo artist and just after he and I had split from our, our respective groups in 1983 we got together to make what was called the Dali's Car album The Waking Hour which, which was you know, considering mix style and my style which was like, like an unlikely matching we made a very interesting very sort of out there album, which, which really be, became a very cult known, well respected album, but it was obscured because you know we we split up before anything happened with it. But uh, in June last year, I heard that Mick, who's my age, with a wife and a young son, had was uh, diagnosed with advanced stages of brain cancer, and I was watching, and there were uh, benefits out there for him and his wife and, uh, and assistant set up. And I was watching the action on that and there didn't seem to be anything really significant going on to raise money. Even the, the fans I found out later are really helping and they've been supporting his family. So I was urged to just uh, make a gesture and you know, not having met him, as you say, Rex, since 84 or whatever, and like it was a bit awkward then, right. it, because we were young and we were both out of our new bands and we were not somebody you've been close to over the years. No, we weren't really good friends, but I no. still felt that I I had a connection with him. I'd made an album with him, so I thought I I I had the urge to to try and uh, to try and approach him, and he was very approachable, very happy to hear from me, and then I um. I have a very good friend who's like a, a benefactor, a very rich 
philanthropist, Dr. Frederick Burry, who, who lives in Liechtenstein, and, and he he kindly offers to to finance my projects and you know i don't i don't accept that because i think that's that's really too kind of him but really appreciate that right. and, uh, and i thought i'd ask him if if he would support and fund an album before contacting mick and he was totally happy to do that which is very kind of him so i contacted mick i booked 10 days in the studio in oxford i said if you're well enough yeah, would you like to do an album? And he was so into it. And what what I found, which was pleased me most, was that it gave him a real reason okay. to to be alive uh, like, to every world. day. Right. But he kind of knew that it was his last work. And of course, when you know, you know people are in their last period of life, they kind of know they're going to go. Right. And there's a kind of wisdom and and a recognition. Yet there's a f accepted it. But yet there's a fight for life so it, it was like that really so he came down to the studio and he was really pretty sick uh, but very happy to be there and we you know I got two ideas out of him which, which were f full ideas of the, that he'd recorded and I you know, I constructed like another song f from a piece that you know we did in 84 and I contributed to two more songs and so we uh, Mick was was unfortunately unable to complete that mm -hmm. because he was sick. I mean, that night he got like another seizure and was well and not well and well and not well and was trying to add stuff to things, but it was obvious that it it, it was going downhill and we we just you know tended the, th the project and now, uh, thankfully Steve Jensen from Japan, the really great drummer from Japan and now in the Porcupine Tree, his great friend. He's mixing it while I'm on tour, and it it's al tracks? it's almost ready to go. Five tracks probably. Okay. So so we're going to release it as an EP. I got the cover all done and all that stuff, and so it's going to be a, a benefit album for his wife and child, okay. Met, uh, and Kyoko and Metis. Not yet, no, no, no. We're just at, you know, at the end of mixing it. Now we're looking for for a proper agent. So it was a it was like a very uh, obviously when you when you meet anybody who's in that position you're terminally ill mm -hmm. it's uh, very very affecting isn't it but I found it to be very much uh, I wanted to take whatever weight he had like in terms of our relationship off his back before he went basically I think that and I was so happy to do that and what was great is that we became very close even though you know, I was in the hospital with him and yeah. everything else so, so you got to spend a lot of time with his wife and yeah, what totally, and uh, and Mick too, and it was very personal because I was there when he was really exposed and you know very you know, vulnerable, and it was very sort of uh, real in that sense. So it was an experience that that is is with me still, and I'm just happy yeah. that he was really happy to be working actually. Well, looking forward to, to that. Yeah. And checking that out. Yeah. If we can transition to another writing partner of yours and I having read a lot of the interviews I, I don't know a lot about the background to this one but uh, Paul Statham Paul, yeah. yes so what was was that like mid 90s when you all stopped writing together Paul was was uh, one of the members of, of the first ever band that you know solo band that I would auditioned back in 85 and he was he was a keyboard player and a guitar you know, multi-instrumentalist and we then only had four tracks rather than all this uh, digital stuff to record on. And he was, I, I auditioned him to be in my band. And uh, I found that one, once we were playing together live, that he was very sort of a, very productive, very prolific. He'd been in a band called The B Movie, which had moderate success in England. And slightly in America and he just happened to be one of those people who just churned out all these sort of ideas th that were not always you know formed mm -hmm. and that was ideal for me b because I could I could mold them and work with them and it just naturally grew out of him being around and none of the other members of the band were that singular uh, I, I just recognized that it you know he had this uh, work flowing out of him, you know. So it just naturally went into me working with him and you know, taking his ideas and you know, rewriting them here and there and just you know, forming a partnership. So, so 
Paul has one song on with me okay. on, on my new album, Ninth. Okay. But mainly Ninth is written by the producer David Barron and I. And he, yeah, David, I call, is an errant genius. He's, he's quite an amazing, very, that word amazing, everybody uses amazing for everything, don't they? Like even Hershey bars. It's, a, it's an amazing chocolate. But he, uh, he's, um, I met him during the work I was doing with a, uh, a singer-songwriter called Sarah Fim up in New York, and he had a studio there. He was uh, partnering with Lenny Kravitz. I didn't know him, and you know the way that I usually work, choose people to work with, you know, almost anybody is by intuition and circumstance, and so dipity chance, if you like, Kismet. And watching him work, I really liked him. He was very astute, very musical, but doesn't really talk about it. He has, you know, great, uh, great uh, understanding of old analog, mm -hmm. you know, technology and all that stuff. But he's not a snob. He's not like like a geek in any way. He's just this sort of like bubble of ideas, and I'm very like full of it too. So we we started working straight away, and I. I earmarked David to work with me on the album, and so 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 he and I have written most of the songs on that album, and also one song is by Mark Gemini Thwaite, which is my my guitarist. You know, the Bauhaus reunion tours were fantastic. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Caught the 9:30 Club show in DC back in '99. Yep, that was a great show. Love the opening coming on the stage the way you did. I love the television screens on the side. It was fantastic. Um, but Go Away White was, I mean, you know, I'm not going to get into what the problems were. Well, you know, Bauhaus always had incidents and problems. That was part of the thing. Right. There was all, always a tension. And, you know, we're, we're four local lads from, from Northampton, which is a very small town in England where nothing happened and we, we created something extraordinary out of nothing. I think you know, at the heart of you know, the band is uh, Danny Ash and I, who, who really co-wrote in one weekend mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, the first album with The Hub and you know, the support players are David and Kevin, and it works in its own way. But there, there's a lot of, like, still... Uh, like with with any old relationship, there's always tensions, and there were there were always tensions from the first moment we all got together because you know there are certain you know without naming names. I mean, I'm a very strong lead character. It's just it's just in me. It's not like I'm me strategizing. Uh, I'm not I'm not edging to get there. I just am there, and I could just can't help it. So I think there's that, and there's. You know, the bass player, David, is very, uh, what would you call it, he's, uh, he always has in his mind that it's a stepping stone to his own work, and, you know, that that's always a tension, because you've got him sort of, you know, you know with with ulterior motives elsewhere, and that, you know, trying to pull that in, and all sorts of things happen, but uh, when you reform, like any relationship, you've got to go through a period of really opening up, I think, you know, some of the issues that are there. If you just leave them dormant, they'll rear their ugly heads, and that's what happened. Nothing tragic, nothing awful. It was just, no, thank you. Well, from my perspective, I, I am thankful that the, the album got released yeah, because I, I, I thought that it was a great... I was, I was, you know, I heard that, you know, that, no, I saw uh, you know, Danny say on an interview online recently that it was like we couldn't stand to be in the same room together that's not my experience at all i was you know the greatest advocate of that band and you're trying to keep them together here and there uh that's why in my er early solo shows i would never play a bauhaus mm -hmm. song in order to keep you know the integrity together in with with in mind that we might reform again otherwise it wouldn't be played but now i play bauhaus because mm -hmm. you, you know the guys had two chances to to uh really you know, to have heaven, and on the third chance, you charge it. Oh, 
Want to know what are we going to hear uh, on tonight's set? Your early career, some of your newer songs, some Bauhaus songs, a little bit of mix of everything, maybe. Well, now that now that I'm sort of uh, you know, free to do what I want in terms of your know, Bauhaus is over and was over years ago, uh, I'm playing everything and anything that I want. There, there's a real mix of you know, strong new work being played, which is going down well, okay. and Bauhaus and and a spattering of my own well-known solo work as well as unknown solo work. So it's certainly going to span all your discography from the 80s to the today. Definitely. definitely. Now, um, let's talk about the EP that's out now. It's I, I Spit Roses. There's actually some uh, significance to that title, isn't there? Yes. What do you think? Well, I read about uh, David J. perhaps uh, mentioned in an interview, uh, which uh, was along, along the time of uh, the Go Away White album. Uh, does that have any significance to the track? Uh, he said that you walked into a room, yes, and uh, it was quite. It was, it was zen. He said he called it zen. It was beautiful, and he sp and you walked in and you spit roses. Well, the, there there was a, a kind of tension going on the night before, and there was uh, there was some sort of uh, you know, discussion going on with the other members of the band about uh, you know, problems within you know, the band, and I could see that that was going to spiral into some sort of you know, negative negative or text of uh, over discussion and which was common so i grabbed a bunch of roses shoved them in my mouth and i i, I determined that uh, you know the first moment that anybody was going to moan at me about something i'd, I'd answer them with roses i'd spit at them but but what would come out would be roses so i think that that speaks for itself and what came out of that is a uh, one of the singles from your new album not the ninth well, yeah, I th <laughs> it, it's called I Spit Roses. It's it's a uh, uh, it's more like a, a story, not based exactly. Uh, well, yes, it is based on that, but it's much more stylized. It isn't it isn't like a tell it all song, but it is very beautiful in that sense and very awesome. But you know, the B side of that is the Prince and Old Lady Shade, which I'm very happy with too, and that's out on a you know, a digital format right now. But you know, we, we do plan to release a single, an actual hard copy. Really, really excited about that. Well, let's talk about uh, your recent film work. Of course, uh, everybody knows about the Twilight franchise, very popular with, with everyone here. And uh, how did you uh, get asked to be uh, in that film, uh, Twilight Eclipse, playing the cold one? David Slade himself, the director, was brought in, English chap, to brought in to give it more of an edge, I think, on Twilight in, in the trilogy of the films. And he, I, I've been in contact with the music director a year beforehand. Alexander Batsavash to to maybe write some w music for the film. I also mentioned to her, which I'm mentioning to lots of people, that you know I'm very interested in in uh, acting, and I, I think I would be excellent in that film, in some form. I had no idea in which. So not having heard from her, I just got an email from David Slade asking me to come and play play a cameo role near the cobalt and not having read the films I asked my daughter and wife who he was he said, that's perfect so I went but like, in the end it's, it's only a 30 second of magnificence it's not it's not <laughs> a full role but it, look, it looks good oh we saw you look it looked great now could we possibly now could we possibly see the return of the cold one in Breaking Dawn part one and two that's being shot now that's up to them of course I don't know you know the writer whose name I don't know I think is 
is continuing forward in time. But if ever they were to write a prequel, I guess, that would work. Wow. Could we see more um, films on the horizon, more acting? I know, of course, you've done The Hunger back in 83, um, and perhaps doing more. Yeah, I am. I am making my way to California after the tour to wow. meet with, with your directors and casting agents, hopefully, and you get my nose under their under their radar. Because I think if you know people know about me very much in the in the acting community and the you know, director community, but they don't always assume that I want to act. So, so it's a case of really meeting people and saying, you know, I'm interested, and you know, would you want da da da. So I think that there is you know some. Yeah, yeah, your latent interest. I've got friends who who, who placed uh, placed my name and that that news. So let's see. Hopefully, I'd very much like to, but wow. not 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 as a main main activity. I I would want to do it. Who knows? But mm. I would want to do it to feed my my music work. But both can feed each other actually if it works out that way. Have you ever studied theatre or acting? No, but I'm a natural you know, theatric. You know, theatrical person that that's what I do in but but I'm not uh, I'm not arrogant enough to assume that I I can be I know that I'd have to learn sure. you know the technique but having worked on you know some films here and there I'm very comfortable in that space it's not hard for me but of course you know screen acting has a certain skill about it actually before I did my filming mm -hmm. on the Twilight shot uh, Billy Burke, who plays uh, Bella's father. Yeah, what's her name? Bella. Mm -hmm. Come on, that's an influence from Bauhaus. <laughs> yeah. It has to be. Um, he was in in the same hotel, so we had you know, dinner together. He happened to be a great fan. I thought, wow, that's <laughs> how do you know? You know. So we had a great dinner together, and I, I asked him to give me some tips. He says, "Be yourself. Don't you don't have to just don't try." I said, "Okay." Now, you actually went to the red carpet premiere in London of uh, Eclipse, didn't you? My daughter, yeah, yeah. Hurian. And that was, that was kind of like, uh, walking through the red carpet was like a, a Disney ride. Yeah. Your daughter's obviously a big fan of uh, some of the actors from Twilight. No, she, she's my fan, and you know, she, she's far <laughs> superior to the actors in, in, oh, okay. in Twilight. Now, are you uh, currently still in Turkey? I am, but I'm between here and now uh, California and sometimes often New York. So I, I'm much more, now, now my children are older and you know, my wife's a, uh, artistic director of, of a national dance company, so she's very busy and it's fine. I'm gonna spend more time over here working. Fantastic, and one more question, of course, um, you've had a couple of reunions, I know you've stated in some interviews that you, know, you would not uh, reunite with Bauhaus. Of course, it's happened yeah, a couple times. If you want Bauhaus, you come to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that answer. But for the record, could we see one more reunion? Is it possible? I am. If you want better house, you come to me. Yeah, you, know, the other boys, you heard it right here. You know, the other boys were offered heaven twice, and they they kind of like bit the hand that fed them, basically. Uh, I love them. They're my brothers. But if you offer people, like I said earlier, heaven twice, and it, it doesn't work out. The third time, you pay $5 million each. He said it right here, guys. The one and the only Peter Murphy. Thanks so much for talking to us here. Uh, click on this and below the bell chart. Hello, Peter Murphy. Click on this. You're watching Click on This online. Peter Murphy. Bauhaus of Peter Murphy. Enjoy. <laughs>